What's going on everyone? Welcome to the video and today I'll be showing you how you can host your Node.js applications using AWS services. So first of all, this is the Node.js applications that we are going to run in the demo. Having a look at the app.js, here you can see we're creating an express um, app and then just with a sessions um, endpoint that serves the session, sessions router and then also another endpoint just for testing and yeah that's basically it uh, the rest of the application isn't really necessary to know about um, it's just we're just going to focus on the hosting of the application but just to show you how it, it looks like we can run the application by running npm start here is defined in the script and then we can go to the application on localhost 8080 and then this is what the application looks like we can go to sessions and here you can see if you hover on a session it says forward slash one gets the id and then you can click on read more and then it will show you more information just some lorem, lorem ipsum about each of these cards so that's basically it for the sample application that we're going to be using. Next off, let's focus on some important terminology around the AWS services that we'll be using in this video. Starting off with the AWS VPC, which is the virtual private cloud. So when you deploy an EC2 instance, it needs to be part of a virtual network on the cloud. This virtual network in AWS is known as a virtual private cloud. Within a VPC, you also have subnets or subnetworks. This is a range of IP addresses in the VPC. This is an isolated network on the AWS cloud. All VPCs are isolated from one another. A VPC is launched in a region and it also has a CIDR block configured. Moving on to the next service, the EC2 instance. This is a scalable compute capacity provided by AWS. Here, AWS takes care of the underlying physical infrastructure, which means you do not need to invest in any hardware. You can create an EC2 instance and terminate the instance when you no longer need it. Going on to the main AWS service that we'll be focusing on today, AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Now with this service, you can use this service to quickly deploy an applications to the AWS cloud without the need of understanding the infrastructure aspects. This service will create the environment for you. You can create and then upload your application to this environment. This service has support for applications developed in Golang, Java, .NET Frameworks, Node.js, which is the application we're going to be demoing today, PHP, Python, and Ruby. This service will create EC2 instances that can be used for hosting the environment. This service will also manage aspects such as capacity provisioning, load balancing, scaling, and application health monitoring. Lastly, the AWS IAM service. This is the AWS Identity and Access Management. This is a web service that allows you to securely control access to AWS resources. You can, can, you can define identities and then give permissions to those identities. IAM policies are used to grant permissions to users. A policy is just an object that you can associate with an, an identity or a resource. Based on the policy, a user could be granted or denied access to a resource. All right, now we can start with the deployment process. I'm currently at the console home of the AWS console. We can start by going to the Elastic Beanstalk service. Get started by clicking on the Create Application button. We are going to select the web server environment and then we can give the application a name. So I'm just going to say node.js tester yandru 
app and then you'll see the environment name is already populated with env at the end of it from the application name we can select a platform choose node.js as the platform and the platform branch as well as the platform version will be populated for you with the newest branch and version we are going to upload our code type in a code version so i'm just going to type in version 01 now you can upload your code from a public s3 url from where your code is located in s3 bucket but we're just going to upload our code from a zip file locally so select the local code option and choose file and then choose the node application that is compressed into a zip file and then we can click on next now we want to create a new AWS service role so click on the create and use new service role this would let Elastic Beanstalk create a new service role and attach the necessary policies to it the two policies that it will attach is the Elastic Beanstalk Enhanced Health and this policy grants permissions to allow Elastic Beanstalk to monitor the health of the environment and the second is the Elastic Beanstalk Managed Updates Customer Policy role and this policy grants permissions for Elastic Beanstalk to update the environment on your behalf so then um, secondly we're going to create an EC2 key pair I already have a key pair created so I'm just going to select the server key if you don't already have a key pair created go to the EC2 dashboard select key pairs click on create new key pair into the key pair name and click on PEM file and then create key pair your key will be downloaded to your local machine and then you can refresh here and you'll be able to select your server key next is the EC2 instance profile and we are going to create that in the IAM dashboard so go to the search bar and select IAM and you can create a new open a new tab and then create go to roles we are going to create a new role an AWS service role and then service or use case choose a service or use case we are going to select an easy to use case and then just the normal EC2 use case allows EC2 instances to call AWS services on your behalf that's what we want we can go on next then there are five policies that we are going to attach to this role the first being Elastic Beanstalk Administrator Access so let's search for that so here's the first one now this role um, grants comprehensive access rights related to Elastic Beanstalk the second one is the Beanstalk customer platformer for EC2 role this AWS managed policy provides specific permissions for custom platforms within the Elastic Beanstalk on EC2 instances then we are going to choose the Beanstalk multi-container docker policy this AWS managed policy allows actions related to multi-container docker deployments in Elastic Beanstalk then we are going to choose the AWS Elastic Beanstalk, Beanstalk web tier policy and this gives all the necessary permissions for the web tier in Elastic Beanstalk environments and then we're also going to give the worker tier policy and that policy allows actions required for work tier environments in Elastic Beanstalk and then we can just click on next we can give this role a name so we can say AWS node JS Yanru role and then we can create the role 
that raw has successfully been created. So let's go back to the Elastic Beanstalk console and refresh over here. You can also see permission details. So for these permissions here is the Elastic Beanstalk web tier that they say should be in the role and the Elastic Beanstalk worker tier and the multi container docker. Then we can choose that role that we just created and we can click on next. Then in terms of the VPC that we're going to select, we can click on the VPC that we have. Let's just make sure by going to the VPC console and inspecting what the VPC is and how does it look. We can go to the VPC here and we can inspect the resource map by looking um, at the VPC's configuration. So this is exactly what we want. So we want three different subnets um, all three in different availability zones and locations. So the first one is in 1A, 1B and 1C and they're all connected to an internet gateway through a route table. So that all looks fine. So we just select that one. We can select all of the instance subnets to apply here. We are not interested in creating a database with this instance. So we can just scroll past here and select next. Then for the root volume, we can just leave it as default. Then for the EC2 instance security groups, we can choose the default security group. Let's just make sure by going back to the EC2 console, click on security groups, click on the security group that we have and go to inbound rules. Now we want to allow HTTP traffic to go into the Elastic Beanstalk um, instance. So let's add a rule and where it says custom TCP, just go down until we see HTTP and it should automatically populate the protocol and port range with 80. Then we can just select the default CIDR block and then we can save rules go back to the Elastic Beanstalk setup scroll past here we're just going to have a single instance with no load balancing then where the instance type is going to be a T3 micro and a T2 T3 small and here is the default AMI ID that we're going to select now the AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image and the image has all of the required information to launch an EC2 instance. So we're just going to click on next. Then the last part is just some basic health monitoring. So we're going to leave that at an enhanced scroll down. Now this is the email that all of the information about the um, health of the um, environment will be sent to. So you can add your email here. I'm just going to add my email address. So when your when the health of your application changes, an email will be sent out to this email address. We can go down, go down. Um, the container options is just a proxy server. We can leave the rest as it is and just say next. A summary will be given to you about the configuration of the Elastic Beanstalk environment. You can review everything and just scroll down and say submit. Now let's wait for the Elastic Beanstalk service to finish configuring and I'll see you guys in a sec. All right, welcome back. Now that we can see here in the event logs how everything is being created, you can see the health of the environment is okay. You can see the ID and you can go down here to the configuration. You can also look at the logs here and the health and then the domain here. 
So if you click on this button, here you can see the Node.js application is successfully hosted. Alright everyone, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. I've showed you how to deploy your Node.js applications using AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.